Hey, this is Dr. B, and in our final slide on medicinal chemistry, let's look at the environmental implications of medicinal waste. Medicinal waste might be solid in nature. Witness what might show up on your beach. Solvent in nature, nuclear, or antibiotic. Let's take a brief look at each one. The preferred treatment these days for solid waste is minim is incineration. And in order to minimize it in the first place, there are strict rules for its usage. This is something uh, a lot of these problems for there's no easy solution for. Disposable techniques are far more safer, but look at all of the waste that it produces. Perhaps incineration and using it only when you have to is about as good as you're going to get. I hope people come up with better methods in the future. Solvent waste can be just a huge thing, gallons and gallons of this stuff. The undesirable solvents are those which are halogenated, which means they're potentially mutagenic, or aromatic, especially polycyclic aromatic, meaning that they are also potential mutagens. Preferred solvents are green and environmentally safe. Water's a good one. Methanol's a good one. Ethyl acetate is a good one. Not as easy to do, once again, in practice, because if you're dealing with greasy substances, you're just not going to be able to use water as a solvent. They won't be soluble. Both of these substances may be reactive, so you don't want your solvent to react rather than your substrate, right? Uh, nuclear waste is a serious issue. The high-level nuclear waste has high energy, perhaps gamma emitters, for example, with a long half-life. The low-level ones, which would be preferred, especially when they're going into a human system, would be of lower energy. Now, if you're using them as a detector method, you need enough energy for them to be detected. So a lot of times they're giving off low energy gamma rays. Uh, but the lower, the better. Also, you better go for a short half-life so it doesn't persist. Antibiotic waste is kind of a different topic, but what we're talking about here is uh, drug-resistant uh, bacteria and other life forms. So natural sources for antibiotics are great, but over time we find that they can evolve natural immunities. Yeah, they evolve to do so. Uh, and we're using a lot of antibiotics these days. We use them for ourselves, for our pets, for our fish that we're forming by aquaculture. Not forming, but working with, developing. They're used for pest control. They're used as hand sanitizers. They're particularly uh, used in high amounts as animal feeds, and this perhaps is an area that can be uh, uh, targeted as one of the biggest contributors. If you want to minimize them, it's not an easy thing. You need strict rules to use them only when necessary. You need to make sure you get rid of them once they're gone. We try to avoid overuse and try to comply with instructions. These are things you can do with individuals to try to minimize this um, this continuing problem that just gets worse and worse, leading to quote-unquote superbugs. Uh, let's complete the study with one look at a uh, case where a drug has been originally synthesized in an environmentally unfriendly way and then evolved to be synthesized in a more green, environmentally friendly way. And we're going to focus on Tamiflu, shown here. Very complex structure to make because we have three contiguous chiral centers that have to be uh, have that absolute stereochemistry, otherwise it won't function. Not an easy thing to do. Here was the original. A uh, This is a uh, total synthesis. Was this done industrially? I don't know, but if you can see starting from scratch, lots of steps, lots of uh, potential for environmental waste. Much better to go... Uh, semi-synthetically, ideally from a natural source completely, but if you can't, the closest one you can come up with. Shikimic acid has those three chiral centers and can be a great starting point. These can be inverted or adjusted pretty easily so that you, starting from this in several steps, you can make Tamiflu. Uh, in this particular case, this substance is known as shikimic acid and has uh, natural sources. If you read about this further, there's, uh, it's not an easy thing to obtain in quantity, but this is a uh, semi-synthetic synthesis of Tamiflu with m trying to minimize the environmental repercussions. This is a look at medicinal waste.